Well, hello again, and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And again, I'm your host, Irv Risch, and uh, the last time we got together, uh, I kind of introduced you to a gentleman who is now deceased. He's with the Lord, Miles Stanford, and uh, we kind of looked a little bit about his, looked a little at his life, and uh, Today, uh, we're going to be starting to go through a uh, a great study, and it deals with spiritual growth. And like I said uh, earlier uh, in another podcast, uh, that these writings really helped me in my spiritual walk with the Lord, and uh, even now, they can be applied uh, as we go through life. And uh, as we look at uh, how God works in all creation in developing things, uh, we'll look at uh, things like how a oak tree uh, matures over many, many, many years. And uh, the process of doing it makes it strong and... uh, We can apply some of these things to our lives as we think about how God works in our lives spiritually. Well, let's just take a look at uh, the main points. Uh, As we go through our, our, I don't want to call it a study, but as we go through this, uh, we'll be looking at uh, things uh, like going up a a stepladder, for example. we, when we go up a step ladder, it's one rung at a time. And uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at eighteen rungs on our ladder. And uh, I just want to say that the world view of success, a man, you know, being successful in life, is totally different than God looking at a person in their spiritual. Uh, maturity and uh, a successful spiritual man and we can look back in history and and uh, back we all we have to do is just look at the uh, the book of Hebrews and look at chapter 11 and we see all the the faith heroes so the first thing we're going to be looking at is faith and that's what we're going to be doing in this study but we're going to as we go through it we're going to be looking at faith time, acceptance, purpose, uh, preparation, uh, being complete in him, uh, appropriation, identification, consecration, self, uh, self self-denial, the cross, discipleship, uh, progress uh, of discipleship, and then rest, help, cultivation, and then continuance. And we'll be looking at them in that uh, order. So with that said, uh, I am just going to get into our uh, study now about faith. And faith truly is our foundation. You know, the aim of this podcast and this series is to carefully bring out some of the more, more important principles of spiritual growth in order to help build on a sound biblical foundation in Christ. I want you to really get a grasp on our foundation. Our foundation is Christ. We can build on no other foundation. He is the solid rock, the solid foundation that we build on. He can honor no other if you build on anything else, if you build on a uh, on a church church principles uh, or your schooling or anything else, if you build on that, it's nothing. So this series is based on a book, and the book was entitled Spiritual Growth, and it was of course by Mild J. Stanford. You know, the uh, Holy Spirit had Paul write to each of us, and he said this, Examine yourselves, 
whether you be in the faith. Now, we start out by looking at ourselves to see if we are in the faith. We find this in 1 Corinthians 13.5. And then he recommends, uh, uh, the recommendation is actually is certainly not uh, out of order as the very inception of the series of studies. So we start right from the very base. Our ladder has to be sitting on a solid foundation before we can go up that first rung. First of all, we must remind ourselves that without faith it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 6. So, if you want to please God, you can't do it without faith. Your faith has to be in Christ Jesus, the solid rock. So if you have not put your faith in the Lord, then any of this that we talk about will not apply to you. Ah, because you don't have that foundation. Moreover, and this is uh, all important, true faith must be based solely on scriptural fact. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10.17 Unless our faith is established on fact, it is no more than congestures, superstition, uh, or speculation, or presumption. You know, it's got to be based on truth, and truth on the fact of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 leaves no question about this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith stands on the fact of the word of God, substantiating and giving evidence of things not seen. And everyone knows that evidence must be founded on fact. Let me say that again. Everyone knows that evidence must be founded on facts. Nowadays, we don't do that. But in our Christian uh, walk, we have to do this. All of us start on this principle. When we were born again, our beliefs stood directly on the eternal fact of the redeeming death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as recorded in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Well, this faith by which we begin, and it is the same faith by which we are able to stand. Uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Walk. Uh, it says, and live. We got walk in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We got live in Galatians 2, 20. And yet have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him. Uh, Colossians 2, 6. You know, since true faith is anchored on scriptural fact, we are certain not to be influenced, uh, you know, by impressions. Now, George Mueller said this. George Mueller was also a great man of God, raised many children in orphanages on faith. George Mueller said this. Impressions have neither one thing nor another to do with faith. Faith has to do with the word of God. It is not impressions strong or weak, which will make the difference. We have to do what, uh, or we have to do with what is written uh, in the Word of God. Yes, it's not ourselves or our impression. It's all based on God's Word. Then, too, possibilities are a big temptation when it comes to uh, exercising faith, too often the attitude is, it doesn't seem uh, possible that he will ever be saved. 
You know, we say this a lot of times. We see somebody and we look at the uh, the probabilities. The way things are going, I wonder if the Lord really loves me. Have you ever said that? But Mueller wrote, many people are willing to believe regarding these things that seemed impossible to them. Faith has nothing to do with probability. The province of faith begins when probabilities cease and sight and sense fail. You know, apparently, uh, you know, appearances are not to be taken into account. The question is whether God has spoken it in his word. Well, Alexander, Alexander R. A. added to this by saying, faith must be based upon certainty. You get that? Faith is based upon certainty. There must be definite knowledge of God's purpose and will. Without that, there can be no true faith. For faith is not a force that we exercise or a striving to believe that something shall be uh, thinking that if we believe hard enough, it will come to pass. That's may, may be positive thinking, but certainly not biblical faith. You know, a lot of times uh, people say, uh, you know, about claiming something. You know, it has to be based on the Word of God. Even Hopkins wrote, faith needs fact to rest, rest upon. i got to have a drink of coffee. Presumption can take fancy instead of fact. God, in his word, reveals to us the facts which, with which faith has to deal. It is on the basis that J.P. Stoney can say real faith is always increased by uh, opposition. While false confidence is dangerous and discouraged by it. Can you understand that? Real faith is always increased by opposition. While false confidence is dangerous and discouraged by it. Well, there can be no steadfastness apart from immovable facts. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never moves. Peter's burden was that the trials of your faith, being much more precious than gold uh, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1, seven. Somebody asks if you're saved, you don't doubt it. You believe because God said it. I know that I am a child of God because God told me I am. And, and the reason I am is I base it all on the Word of God. You know, once we begin to reckon or count on facts, our Father begins to build us up in the faith. We grow in the faith and the knowledge of the Lord. For his profoundly simple trust in, the, in God, Mueller was able to say that God delights to increase the faith of his children. We ought, instead of wandering or wanting no trials, before victory, no exercise for patience, to be willing to take them from God's hand as a meaning. You know, a lot of times we try to shy away from all these trials in life when should we, we should be embracing them because with them comes maturity in our faith. I say, and say it deliberately, trials, obstacles, 
difficulties, and sometimes defeats are the very food for faith. Wow. That's really something, you know, you think about it. On the same subject, James uh, McConkie wrote, Faith is dependent upon God, and this God dependency only begins when self-dependency ends. When later on we're going to be looking at self and selfless and and uh, but anyway, uh, self-dependency only comes to its end with some of us when sorrow, suffering, affliction, uh, broken plans, and hopes bring us to the place of self-helplessness and defeat. And only then do we find that we have learned a lesson of faith. To find our tiny craft of life rushing onward uh, to a, a blessed victory of life and power and service, undreamed of in the days of fleshly strength and self-reliance. J.B. Stoney agreed by saying, it is a great thing to learn faith. That is, simple dependence upon God. It will comfort you much to be assured that the Lord is teaching you dependence upon Him. And it is very remarkable that faith is necessary in everything. Well, the just shall live by faith not only in your circumstances, but in everything I'll believe the Lord allows many things to happen and on purpose to make us feel our need of Him. The more you find Him in your sorrows or wants, the more you will be uh, attached to Him and drawn away from the place where the sorrows are to him the place where he is. Set your afflictions on things above, your affections on, on I'm sorry, set your affections on things above, Colossians 3, 2. You know, actually, we cannot trust any anyone further than we know him. So we must not only learn the facts involved, but even more intimately, Come to know the one who presents and upholds them. And this is the life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou had sent. John 17, 3. That was right in the Lord's Prayer. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according as he has uh, divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are ye given unto exceedingly great and precious promise, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter two, 1, verses 2 and 4 through 4. Well, as we continue on looking at the principles of spiritual growth, the next thing we're going to be looking at is time. And when I talk about time, I'm talking about God's time, not our time. You know, we're living in the realm of time. But God, uh, so God has to deal with us from eternity into time. So we have to realize God has no time. He has forever. And he can deal with us. And he's building us for eternity. Even though we're in the realm of time, this is the, the proving grounds. Uh, to do our our spiritual growth. And I believe we'll grow right on into eternity and continue growing. But we're 
laying a foundation right now. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. And I hope you realize that it all is based on your faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, we're going to end right there. And with that said, uh, I'm just going to end my podcast. And as you go through life, always remember God is out here. And he wants you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of him. And the only way we can do that is open up our Bible. Because that's where we're going to find God and find all that he wants us to know. And this is where we base truth. The world is not going to give us truth. Only through the word of God do we gain truth. Well, with that said, I'm just going to leave you. Bye for now. Lord bless.